Hello everybody. We're getting another one of these works workbench sessions set up right here. Now I've got a dark sword figure sitting in my hand right here. You can see we got a little bit of free hand there. I was just waiting for my window to come up. So now what we're going to try and do is add ourselves that little live chat thing here. So you see that sitting over there. Let's see if we can get it sitting over here. Let's do that. And you're just going to have to bear with me here because we actually have to do all the authorization and that sort of thing. So just bear with me as we type in passwords and emails and all that kind of glorious stuff right here. And the idea is we're going to take the contrast paints and we are going to mix those with regular paints. And by regular paints, this time I mean not GW paints. So we're just going to have it allow it to do this and now let's see if I can alright so alright I think I'm just gonna make sure that this is all set up here let's uh... Here, let's get some nice bright colors on this some some of that and maybe some yellow here alright now, is anybody, let's confirm if someone's in the chat. Hey there, first and last. How's it going? So I'm going to just move this over, make sure I can get to this. All right, poof. And now we're going to remove. Bang. Yay. So we'll go, looky here. We got a bunch of Dark Sword figures. They all have one thing in common. They are all from the Night's Watch. And what we are going to do is paint these all in that, well, we're going to take the black, right? Now, unlike the regular Song of Ice and Fire Night's Watch, these guys, clearly, you've got widely different outfits, like so. But the request was for our typical snow effects here, and you can see it's just it's a basic, really dark gray. Actually did, though, this is from the game right here, this little freehand there. So we'll be doing some Sky Earth and such things. Now... Let's go. Ah, they're sitting over here. So, speaking of Night's Watch and Song of Ice and Fire, so here is a unit, and a lot of you have seen this before. This is a unit of, what is it, Ranger Trackers, I believe, not Ranger Hunters. I think those are the cavalry version. But these guys right here, I did in a five part series for the Patreon page. So, when you see that, that Army Painter Pledge thing go by, that is the unit. From the night's what so far that I have done, and I'm going to take you over here so you have a closer look. So see that? See how there's a little bit of blue in there? We have a little bit of green in some places, some purple. You can really see it. Or see on his pants and such. We're going to try and get a little bit of that variation in some of these guys that have more clothes going on. So the again the basing, it was the standard sort of bark and branch. And Dark Sword Miniatures, poof, right here. So let's see, let's check out that George R. Martin line. Boom, George R. Martin Masterworks. And oh, look, here's Jon Snow. Actually, I've got this Jamie Lannister over there. I'm going to do that one. So we've got the Night's Watch Raven Keeper. Oh, here we go. See this Night Night's Watch Warrior of the Bow? So we're going to do stuff like that. And we're going to go back to our first scene right here. I'm also going to mix some contrast paints together. So we're going to mix the, the dark blue and, and the dark brown. See what kind of a basically dark gray we can make there. This might be the most unusual, at least for some folks. So we have the Shia's purple and the warp lightning. Purple and green mixed together, believe it or not, it will give you a gray and potentially a dark gray. I found this out years ago when we would run out of Nuln Oil. Yeah, it must have been Nuln Oil. So we would mix, oh gosh, uh, what was it, the um, Agrex Urshi? We would mix the brown with one of the dark blues to make a black. We ran out of those. So then out of just desperation, I took, here, I'm going to move this up here into the palette camera range. I would take green and purple, mix them together. Believe it or not, it makes a gray. We're also going to throw out some Space Wolves Gray. 
Then you've heard me talk about the contrast paints and how the lighter ones behave a little differently than those darker ones. Let's go over brushes here. Brushes, it's the usual, it's the number eight round craft brushes from Hobby Lobby, either from the store or on the website. And that's 12 of them for five bucks. New no kidding. There's other brushes too. You can get sets like this. This set is a whole box. I think it had five different, four different sizes, 12, 10, 18, and 6, or 8 and 6. But there was some like six of each brush, whatever. Real similar to these. See, they have a nice tip on them. And here's the other thing to it. I haven't shown this on some of the live sessions. So here's one that's more new, pristine, right, over here. Now look at this. We've got ourselves actually a filbert brush. But look at look at that sharp. It's almost the same as this more pristine brush. But here we've got this advantage of a much softer, longer surface. And it's a 35 cent brush somewhere in that neighborhood. So if it wears down a little bit, who the heck cares? Now let's just start to throw out some colors here for the heck of it. So we're going to take some of that Space Wolves gray. We're just going to get right down into this here. And I'm going to start up here because we're going to try and do a little gravity thing here. So if I start up here and just drop some of that. It's almost a little bit, we're using this like the contrast medium, which apparently you just can't get anywhere these days. Now we're going to do that little mix we were talking about. So that's the Leviathan blue right there. Let's move that back a little bit. And now for the wild wood. It is not going to be black. Even though blue and brown make black, you'll see that depending on how much brown there is, okay, not quite so gray, the warm gray. The more the blue we put in there, let's see what happens now. So watch what happens right there. And I think, because this is a this is a new camera, I'm actually gonna turn up my brightness back to where it should be there we go and you're gonna see that that's not black it's got a little different coloration to it see how we're trying to take the space wolves gray pull that down just a smidge there here like so but like I said it is not it's almost got a little bit of purple to it now, if, if I hit a little more of the wild wood, that's the dark brown. Let's let's put it right here in this inside part of the cloak. Now it's it's just a, a little different color, not quite so blue. If we went with more of the Leviathan blue, yeah, I mean, you see where I'm going with that. Let's get some of that Space Wolves gray. So we this is yet another little bit of a mix here. Now, going to hit his tunic. So well, you can take, what is it? Is it called Black Templars? I'm, I'm pretty sure the black contrast paint. You can do that, or you just take a couple of colors. You, you save yourself the eight dollars buying the jar of the black. Because what if you're not going to be doing okay, uh, black Templars, and you maybe you're only going to use it for bolters or a much rarer occasion where you need black. Instead of buying that jar and hoping that it lasts until it runs out or whatever, maybe instead... Now here, I'm actually going to take more of the, the straight-up Wildwood because I want his boots to be more of a brown. Yeah, I know it all is really, really dark at the moment. Not a big deal. Now, is he wearing gloves? Yes, he's wearing gloves. I'm going to get the other interior of his cloak here, like so. I'm also going to zoom in a touch, and we'll just make sure we've got Mr. Focus locked in. So gloves. Now this is where we're going to start to mix in some regular paint. I'm going to take this sepia liner from... Reaper miniatures, 
Let's toss that over here. And then I'm gonna take that wildwood, gonna mix it together so we get a little difference. Yeah, that's a little more opaque almost. It also means that I can take regular water and send that down. A little more wildwood there. A couple places we're gonna use this. We'll hit the bow, we'll hit the gloves. Bow gloves and maybe hair too. Yeah, let's do the hair. But you see, it still relatively behaves like a contrast paint. It's going down in your crevices. In in watercolor parlance, you'd sort of call that sedimentation. Now, obviously, capillary action. That's that's the phrase that pays. And it's not just contrast paints. You use oil paints. I mean, you talk about some serious capillary action there. Now, what we're going to do is take some of that sepia liner, add even more water to it, because this he's just got a glove on his on his arrow, and he's actually pulling an arrow out of there. So we're just kind of hitting the quiver with that. Now, let's dive down into the rest of his base. We'll get the wild wood going here. This surface is pretty absorbent. Now let's play let's play another little game here. Let's play the purple and green makes gray game. So we got the stylish purple, which I always like to call stylish purple. This is actually a bit of a greenish gray that I've got, and that should emerge as I paint this on the base. So I just made my own very dark gray, but it has a greenish tint. Guess what? You toss in a little more. The purple has a different tint. Has a little different look to it. So let's finish off the rest of this base here. Because it's going to get covered in snow effects for the most part. So we are not going to fret about that a whole bunch We've got our makeup sponge here. Oh, look at this. You're going to wipe some of that away. And you've already got some nifty shading going. I got another type of makeup sponge here. We can take away even more. You can add, subtract. No big deal. Hey there, Bethany. How's it going? Yeah, you know, it's, ooh, let's see, I think you saw part two, right, of the, the Gem Dragon. Well, there's another one. Oh, gosh. Well, I shipped them off today, so I can't, can't show them to you. But, oh, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing these crazy sci-fi guys, but we were using the Green Stuff World Intensity inks. Oh, here we go. I was using these guys, because these guys are essentially these guys except for one milliliter less you pay roughly half the price now there is a, a little drawback with these remember the snow effects that I like to do well unless you seal those green stuff world intensity inks well they could sort of reactivate into your snow so you could potentially have yellow snow purple snow uh, but I, I was, they told me, uh, few folks, is that look just, just if you seal it in between, and there's some sealers that are really heavy duty, they're designed for stuff like candy inks, which Green Stuff World makes those, and be darned if I'm trying to find a miniature that I can use those candy inks on. So I just did the base. Now we've got a couple of grays out here. I'm gonna go back. That's the. Blue, the Leviathan blue. This is the wild wood here. That's the wild wood. I'm going to throw in a bit of water. And I'm going to do his cloak. And it's going to look really insanely dark. But actually, when you, when you mix the paints, not only does it dry a touch lighter. Oh, look at that nice, kind of a warm, brownish black. It's starting to show up. So that 
I know there's been a lot of talk on the Song of Ice and Fire pages about, well, using contrast paints. They're units. <laughs> you know, it's there's a lot of them. There's 12 to 13 guys per unit. So contrast paints, that's why the first, wasn't I think the first things I tried with it were Song of Ice and Fire units. So that was more of my purple mix there. And look at that. Nice, deep, dark but it's got a little color to it that's the difference that when you use that uh, black templars whatever that's all you're getting you're not getting any variation now here we we mix a little of that space wolves gray hitting the chain mail we know it's got to be a really dark metal so we're gonna do a really dark metal drop that down in there now I am gonna switch brushes here away from my more pristine one. We don't want to mash that up too much in these early stages. So we got these four. And now we're going to go back to our other mix here. This is the Wildwood slash Leviathan. I don't suppose you've seen the Baratheon minutes. I have not seen them in person yet. But let's just say that, what is it, the cave, the, not the cave dwellers, the followers of Bone, the rattle shirts of the world and certain other things well those are oh about four feet to my right and they are all fully prepped and ready for youtube live demos so you're going to be seeing those just this week basically the new figures notice i'm kind of saving the faces here because i'm going to do a little special thing mixing a skin tone with that we got another one here Hopefully I might get a chance to mess with a little freehand on this. I love the colors of the... Oh, yeah. They contrast nicely against the scale. Oh, I didn't know the scale 75 had those, too. You really can. You, um, actually, there's that last... The gem dragon. Well, you saw that the big one. There's one last one. The ruby gem dragon or whatever. I was going to use the intensity inks on that. Because I thought that could be fun. So, again purple green so you got a little more of a greenish mix here I'm just going to smack this right down in here now I'm going to take a little more of the purple and we're just going to let this sort of free form do its own thing like so I mean look at how dark this is that is not black that is our own dark gray that we made Let's see, how many of the intensity ink colors are there? I want to say there's 12, two sets of six maybe. They usually come in sets of eight or ten with the green stuff world. I, I've got them kind of mixed up with the candy inks right now, so I, guess I couldn't do a quick count here while I'm doing this too. And I'm sure they'll probably come out with more. So I'm going to go back to this, my little homemade brown over here for his boots. Like you do. For his hair. Like you do. Some of this robe. And now I'm going to take some Space Wolves Gray and I'm going to chuck that right here on the sword arm. Because I can do that. And now the base, just gonna splash something on there just to get that out of the way. Because as you saw by the the color test figure there, the base is darn near completely covered with snow. Why should I kill myself over that? So we got three of the five down. Hmm, gonna go. Actually, here we're gonna go more of the Wildwood slash Leviathan Blue. Just looking at the candy inks. Yeah, the, actually on the Styrene Syndicate last night, well, it's technically Sunday, that Gil on the Red Dragon Model Works, the Styrene Syndicate, he did a little demo with the candy inks. Uh, obviously, airbrush style. Now, see, I had a little more water in there, so see how that lightens that up a touch? Now we're back to our sort of green, purple, gray mix. We move it around. 
This is actually going to have even more of the blue in it. Even more of the blue. Get that down in there and now more of the wildwood. We're just going to go straight wildwood here. And that's just all going to kind of mix together as gravity just pulls it all down. Yeah, more wildwood here. So it's nice. You don't have to be delicate. And for those that, well, Bethany and first last they've seen this they've seen this show often enough to know that those first stages are darn messy oh yeah it's good and messy good and messy we're just trying to block as much stuff in as we can hair again real quick beard space wolves gray mix onto the sword blade because, again, we're going to be going over the top of that with regular paints to the base. Going to grab some more straight up wild wood there. At this stage, nothing fancy. That's actually a little bit of purple we're going to add into our wild wood blue mix. Because, why not? going to do our last guy here. So we got these five. Now, I may not work on all five afterwards. I, some of them may show some little lesson thing better than others. So this is the Space Wolves Gray mix here. Back to my darker stuff. That's the Wildwood slash Leviathan Blue mix. Just letting that get down in there. Oh, and this was a topic of conversation. Primer, Stinores, Badger, this. Hey, Justin, how's it going? Oh, hey, two guns. Hello, James. Uh, oh, before that goes away, recent follower and finding. Oh, thanks. It is, it's different. It's been called subversive, radical, all kinds of things. Essentially, these two right here, think of what, the GW thing is it's sort of a bone white well you got this sandy color here you got white any variations of these two even doing a little bit of the whole zenithal thing hey and those Steinol res primers you can brush those on they are inexpensive at least by comparison well and boy they're durable they go on everything I use them on bones you name it I use it on there let's see first I uh, yeah, the, most people almost need some kind of traumatic therapy relief after seeing the mayhem <laughs> that happens here. So yeah, they had a little bit more of the brown. We went in here. Let's get some of that. It's even more of that sepia liner. Just let that get in there. I guess one thing that does happen when people see these and they kind of mess around with it, give it a try, they say, yeah, that really... They loosen me up. I just I didn't get as anxious about triads and color mixtures and everything else. I was painting seemed a little more relaxing, which I mean for crying out loud, unless you're like me or, or whatever, this is your fun thing. This is your hobby, it's your enjoyment. And be darned if I can if I can draw a little more enjoyment out of it, then that is Boy, that really is the goal. All right, so that now just about gets everybody in line for a little bit of maybe homemade skin tone here. Ploof, we'll just do that. I'm going to actually get rid of these, get these out of the way. We got a choice of a few things. See, we got our... Maiden Flesh here, that's a typical kind of off-white. Oh, and we also have, I got a couple of these old game colors. These are also from Vallejo. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Uh, do, 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 see a workbench. Yeah, the, uh, here we go. This is actually, well, since the rain kind of embedded and I didn't have allergies from mold and everything else, uh, I think this is about the fourth one I've done since June 15th. I wasn't able to do any because, oh my gosh, 
that was just horrible some of the things that were going on here let's get our ah let's try let's try this this gore grunta fur I don't need a whole bunch of it in fact very little so I'm just gonna use a brush and plop a little right over here and we're gonna do something like this but a touch of the space was gray so all I'm doing right there hopefully yeah you could see that some kind of a dark skin tone now where is my hand in shadow here so you can see I got myself a nice little dark skin tone that I can lighten up from there but because there's some contrast paints in there see how it's gonna be translucent but this is not gonna pool in that hmm, what do you want to call it really weird random way sometimes that just the lighter contrast paints will so again we just we made ourselves our own little contrast paint so glove there glove there we'll hit some skin tone here and if it's dark that's fine that is just fine I'm gonna hit his gloves here though I'm gonna go ahead and hit that glove there and that glove there and I'm gonna do his boots so it went from a skin color to a boot color however see how it mixes in with the contrast paint there kinda of changes it up a little bit nice now let's grab one of our or two or three sponges and remove a little bit of this just to get some more light back in there we just got a couple more of these since I can grab a little bit more of my original skin color if so desired in you go I'm just gonna hit each one here there's not a lot of skin tone to deal with there's basically just their faces and this is just our opening salvo right here that's all this is and hopefully by this time everything else has dried actually he is wearing a glove there well we'll just make him this color kind of a reddish brown leather and I'm gonna change my skin tone again I just took my skin tone I mixed it into my dark gray mix and now already starting to tint the boots a little bit more towards the brown away from just black we could even now again there's all this snow here so a lot of mud spatter on the bottom of the cloak doesn't make a whole bunch of sense But you can see I'm going to go over these gloves. So that makes them that much darker. There we go. I guess uh, no fear or no shame. I'm <laughs> not sure which one it is. All right. Let's get into one of these where the cloak, one of our first, wow, ah, let's try this guy here. Cloak. We want to have something that's more of a, a gray, lighter gray just gonna throw this maiden flesh it's just an off-white Stuka, what made you see him product on Instagram and seeing the process yeah it is and it is it it's crazy with this because it's sort of half finished half finished half finished finished boom it's and then it's done and there's there's not kind of an in-between it just it doesn't look like it's gonna be finished ever and then it's done and you turn like what the heck just happened so here we go speaking of what the heck just happened taking that maiden flesh we're mixing it with our grays and now we're making a lighter gray oh yeah oh and by the way this is well it's a new old camera believe it or not after much research and countless hours of filming with what was supposed to be the newer better camera we did some Google search in and it turns out the 920s which is older is much better than all of the newer cameras like the 930e which I had paid much more for so the, the 930e is going elsewhere it's probably gonna maybe be used as a battle report camera I don't know 
but it's not going to be used for this anymore. And guess what? Mix a little more of the maiden flesh in there. Oh, your painting says it hasn't changed much since the 80s. Yeah, it's... Yeah, some people, they get kind of freaked out because my painting style can sometimes change by the day. That's It's a little different here because, well, the materials change a whole lot more. And when we first started painting, and for the longest time, the materials stay kind of the same. And then all of a sudden, with the advent of Kickstarter and, and some of the new availability of stuff, oh my gosh, everything changed. And there's new products every other week. There's a new product coming out. So see, I can go darker. I can go lighter. See that darker down in the crevices there? And now what I've got this, I'm gonna, this is almost a little bit of oil painting. So I took a lot of the paint out of the brush. So that's virtually, or almost, doing some oil painting here. Watch this. I'm taking that darker color here. Let's look at that. That is like, it's almost like what I would do with oils. Bethany has seen it. Anybody that's seen the oil painting demos, that is very similar really really similar so we're back into that maiden flesh and that's the key part of these brushes right here the logitech 920s it's phew, at least 35 dollars cheaper possibly more like 45 to 50 dollars cheaper depending where you get it and like i said i got one to do my basing videos with thinking well okay <clears throat> it's uh, I'm working with basing materials color is not an issue I don't need to spend another hundred and some odd hours for a camera just to do basing and as soon as I just happened to have a painted miniature I shoved it under there to test the focus and I went you gotta be kidding me this I just thought maybe it was an accident that it was either that particular miniature or the lighting there was something and I tested it again and again and again and finally there there is no other way to test it except just get another one set it up and use it and I've used it on the last four patron videos huge difference it focuses better it's not just a color focus is better you can zoom in I, the other camera I could barely zoom in at all here let's just go wild here let's go bonkers and we're just gonna really zoom in like crazy you don't have to worry about your focus that's pretty cool so again just now I've noticed and I said this on the the patron videos I've mixed the, the regular GW paints in with the contrast paints they do not act as well with the contrast paints as these Reaper ones do I've mixed the oh gosh yeah <laughs> Bethany could tell me the creature cat of pro acryl yeah mixed in with that they they played together nice so here we go. We got nice warm, some nice warm grays on our cloak there. We got a little, we got some light to dark action going on. We got this semi-translucent paint here. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of Space Wolves gray now. We'll mix it with that. And we're going to dust some of that over some chain mail. Like so. Let's see, when you've got that stuff sitting down in there, say I had it just was sitting down in the crevices, and I said, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that material. That's just contrast paint that was sitting down there waiting for me to use it. Now on the lower section of his tunic here, here, let's put, this is my other off-white that I like to use. It's just, it's a bluish white. It's... 95% white, but there's a little bit of blue in it. And I'm going to grab my Maiden Flesh again. I'll leave that right over here. Yeah, like that. going to go back into my... This is my gray mix that I 
created for myself. And see how it's got that semi translucent? See, it doesn't wipe out everything underneath there. It leaves a little bit of it behind. So we go in with a little more. Where are we at? Okay, you can see that. A little more. I can get his sleeves here. I'm going to go with a little more. It's as darn near like oil painting. I'm going to hit the this little bit of his cloak here where it's tied together. A little bit there. End of his sleeve. And I'm going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to take some green here. I'll mix it into his into my little bit of flesh tone here. So again, semi translucent mix. What are we doing? We're starting to get some of that green that should especially be not just five o'clock shadow green, but you're thinking he's wearing all black. He basically has no facial hair. So we need to give him a little bit of a greenish touch here. I'll put that green somewhere else too. I'm gonna actually put some of that into his cloak here because oh gosh, what is it the the the, the parable? Yeah, painting parables. That's it. So if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. That's the the very first painting parable. And I'm gonna I have to make some stickers. That have all these sayings in there. I've, I've tried to remember to write them down. Of course, Kathy says just, well, you can watch your videos. And, and some of them have two or three of those in there. So I've got to find those things. Or maybe Bethany can help me remember. Uh, oh, they're about to turn out the power. Okay, that that's I'll be here for, for a while yet. And, of course, I'm going to try and do, oh, gosh, Wednesday ish, Tuesday, Wednesday, do another one of these guys here at least. So, thanks for stopping on. <laughs> Eat a Tim Tam for me or a couple. Because if I had them here, I wouldn't stop with just one or two. So, so I, just absent mindedly, I took my semi translucent flesh tone mix here. And look at that, I'm not even thinking about it. I forgot to even mention it. We're already starting to shade that face. Let's grab one that's so you can see in no time at all. We just went from our original little just ah glaze of whatever over the top to hmm. We got ourselves some skin tones going on there. Oh look, I'm even putting a little bit of shading on the base with my skin tone because I can do that. You can too. It's a little more of a maiden flesh going right into here. And for those of you that haven't seen it yet, this, this white palette you see me use, it is nothing more than a Chinese food container, a chamois sponge, and a piece of one, and some parchment paper and some water and that's all it is it is nothing more than that that's all it is so you can see we're already just doesn't take much so you say well we want to maybe get some blue in his chain mail so there's your leviathan blue gonna take a little bit of my original black mix here I'm gonna take me some water Thin that down. And now we're going to use this more of more in a glaze type of a fashion here. So I'm going to get rid of some of that. So I was just looking to get that down in some of these crevices here. Maybe a touch more of my black there. Let's get, get around this edge like that. See, I got 
Got to get some down in here to... There we go. And because I can even hit this again. So I'm just going to drop some of that there. And now we're going to push some of that around. So this is something I want to try too with the contrast paints on some cruel sea ships. So say I just push that. It's not being used like a glaze. I'm almost using it like a weathering powder. See, look at that. I just shoved it up into that crevice there. Because I just... I think people think there's just one way to use these things. There is, it's a tool like anything else. Now, you don't necessarily want to use a hammer for, say, cutting glass. You might get some interesting edges that way, but the hammer can do a lot of things. So there's that little seam right there. That was just done, actually, with some contrast paint. I'm going to actually get a little bit of water here, push that around. Now this is some of that maggot white here. So I'm going to take the old brush, getting some of the water out of that. And good, that's on camera. So now we are mixing that basically bluish white with that Leviathan blue. Not a dry brush. We're going to see if we can't just sort of drag this brush over the top in a few places there we got some blades to to do here a little more here and th this is night's watch so I gotta gotta be careful about getting too much sparkle into this chain mail here and this is not even Gosh, it's barely a middle tone that I'm throwing on here, so we should be okay. And what the heck, if it is too bright, we can always tone it down. So, so now we're going to get in here and try and pick out a few individual rings here and there so that it has some kind of... It's like it's metal catching the light in some places but still trying to keep it dark. But like I say, if it gets too light and you say, oof, no, that's too bright, just whack it with some kind of a glaze, tone it down, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. And that's, I'm glad I just stuck with my maiden flesh over here. Here, let's shoot that one more time. See, we've gone back and forth in a few places. Let's get colors got to go everywhere. Let's get a little bit of that gray into his face there. Boots. Let's do some boots here. So we've got our sepia liner. Just going to make sure you can see it. Back when it comes back on. Yeah, it's... Now, I'm going to try and uh, do one during the week, maybe during the day or something like that. Or, or maybe Monday night I do one more. <laughs> Let's just say one more friendly for U.S.-based viewers who aren't necessarily going to be up till 5 o'clock in the morning like the rest of us. There, let's, let's grab some of this Maiden Flesh. Let's go and bring it over here. Now, see all of a sudden the sepia liner... Now it just starts to look a little bit tan. It doesn't look quite so yellow anymore. And we'll get a touch of this on our boots here. So it wasn't all that long ago. Here, let's let's pop some of this on the gloves too while we're at it. So let's grab. We were, we were basically here. What the heck time is it? It's 2:37. What 15 minutes ago? Not even. You know, we were here, and now we are here. We're already doing our wet blends here. Darn near doing wet blends on the on the face there. We've got ourselves a whole bunch of neat colors, and all we've done is taken a few of these regular colors and mix them in with your contrast paints. And there's what five of them 
up there. That's all. Nothing fancy. So, what, five of these things? Mm, what, 40? Yeah, you're looking at, <laughs> well, so that's $40 worth of contrast paints. You add maybe three more. I only got 11. Did I? Yeah, I got 11. That's all I got. I don't have any more than that. And I don't really see myself getting any more because I can mix what I need. That That's the one thing that has definitely, without a doubt, the last, what, 40 some odd hours of working with these things. I've, I've worked with them not on videos, too. That you can mix them together. You can make what you need. You don't have to have every freaking color of the rainbow of these things. And I know people get scared of mixing. You know, I, I can understand that. But once you just give it a little bit of thinking, it's not that big a deal. You know, blue and black or blue and brown together make black. That's there's nothing technical about that. Now, depending on how much blue or black you put in, you're gonna get something that's maybe a little more blue or a little more brown. But now you've got a little more of that variation. A little more variation in there. And this is with this is with the beat up nasty brush here. So let's, let's see if we can get one of our one that's a little more pristine here and play with that. Let's see what we can do. Now I'm gonna go in here, just get some darks where the eyes are. Can you see that? Perfectly okay with the late streams, prone to missing the early ones. Yeah, for me, this really is my prime work time. It sort of starts at around 1 in the morning and goes till, well, insane o'clock in the morning. It is no fun going to bed when the sun is out because that is that is the consequence. that I That's the price that I have to pay for doing this. But, well, I've got like three levels of curtains on the windows to try and keep the sunlight out. And I basically have a lot of LED lights on so that it sort of still looks like nighttime. Even though it's getting the birds are chirping and it's they're all saying, dude, it's it's daytime. And I'm saying, heck no, man. You can have it. It's all yours. We denizens of the night, we enjoy our night. Now let's go back to that brownish color. See if I can't throw a little bit of that onto this belt here. Alter that color just a touch. And maybe get some of that in here too. So this is where we start to play with some of those colors. But let's not get too boring. Let's go crazy again. What can we do that's going to just be insane? We're going to take some of this here. We're going to make ourselves a bluish green. So what in the world are you going to do with that? I'm going to start putting it in a few places here. I'm going to start putting it on some parts of the cloak here. Very, very subtle. Because remember, we're using the contrast paint, mostly contrast paint here. And you say, okay, what's the deal with the the bluish green down here? There's snow over here. Sorry to be shaking the camera. This, where's, where's our guy? Here. So you got all this snow here that would actually be reflecting light upwards onto his cape. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to add a little more of my, a little more of my white there. And and this is zoomed in reasonably well. See how, see how translucent that is? Look at what we're doing. Check that out. I think you can see it. Ah, now you can't. It's just a little kind of glossy. Oh, Bethany's back. Did you bring Tim Tams? Oh, yeah, that is, that's pretty nifty. So see a little bit of reflected light there for the snow that we know is going to be there. 
all that was touch of the green that's the leviathan blue a little bit of that maiden flesh now i've noticed when i tried doing this with the gw paints some funky stuff it's just i don't have a good word for it other than it's just kind of slimy the gw paint sort of slides around it's kind of slimy by comparison to say my reaper paints or or Vallejo for that matter or probably I just I don't use a lot of scale 75 actually I don't really have any uh, I love to use some of the nocturne paints but I don't have those all right so we a little bit of green in here what if what if perfectly yeah okay I just want to make sure I'm trying to catch up with the messages here and for whatever reason like an hour and a half two hours in the chat just kind of at least the display chat dies I can go into YouTube itself and see it that's a definitely a lot much harder for me to see so see now I get a little bit of green in there I'm gonna do that on the sword blade here let's lighten up these sword blades a touch except I want some of my Leviathan blue in there all right can you see that yes you can yes you can so see that's again that semi translucent we just sort of drop that in like we do here let's get a little touch of some lighter colors here now I still have a decent portion of the whatchamacallit the GW what are they shades what the heck are they I got one here we'll look and see what it's called shade so I still got some of these old puppies here and maybe we'll incorporate those yeah yeah Justin I well the secret weapon paints and I've got got a couple of them here so we'll ah here's another one this this is one of my favorites. Hey, we're gonna put it out here and see what we we can do. Yeah, just throw it out there. Why not? And I'm gonna mix that with the Gore Grunter. So that was up the Gore Grunter fur, right? And that's actually the Vallejo pale green, because the Vallejo paints. Well, Justin knows this that they and Bethany knows too. They are formulated to dry really really matte which is a nice thing very nice thing all right let's let's go a, let's step our skin tone a little lighter on him you in picture yeah it's oh my god it's, it's so much easier dealing with this camera I cannot believe that we literally had to downgrade to upgrade and there's there was others I was gonna go in the opposite direction I thought well maybe I just need to get an even more expensive camera and I started to I'm looking at the, the feedbacks I'm doing Google searches and there's folks saying that good grief that that 920 s works better than my two hundred dollar camera that I got and I said uh oh all right, I need to take notice of this. So I, I'm almost thinking of like stockpiling them. Just put them in reserve, like the strategic oil reserve or something. So in case something weird happens, I've always got a 920 on hand. Like, like a disaster supply or something like that, that, that streamers everywhere are hoarding 920S cameras. Crazy as that sounds, that seems to be the case. All right, now here let's let's get a little bit of just see if we can't get some whites of the eyes in here too as a little bit of a reference. This is a bit of a large brush to be doing that, but no no guts, no glory. And I'll flip them this way. there we go while I got this here so conveniently I am also gonna drag this right over not a dry brush I was just painting eyeballs with this so 
Definitely not a dry brush. But see how that starts to reveal itself now? And I hope it shows up now, at least on this camera, it might, and I think it does. See, that's got a greenish tint, it's almost got a purplish tint, and that's got a warm reddish-gray tint by comparison. That's the kind of stuff I was hoping that I could do with this kind of mix. Here, let's, let's give him some kind of eyebrow things going on here. Now, there's one thing that you do sometimes have to check with this particular chamois here. So I'm going to just refill. See, I'm going to put some more. There we go. This is the other fun thing. Watch what I'm doing here. Again, this is a Chinese food container. So there's actually water in this little channel right here. It's actually really nice. Instead of having to dip into my paint water, it's like a little super clean water trough. <laughs> Yeah, it works, works pretty neat. So I've got again, my contrast paint just sitting there. Here, let's, let's dabble in some greens. So that's that verdigris pale green. It's going into our skin color here. Let's do... This is, again, it's more translucent than it is liquid. So if that's see-through... See, I'm trying to give them a reflected light but also have it be greenish got to do it on this side this will be trickier because we got the cloak right there but look at see it there's that is not a dry brush whatsoever it's the advantage of these type of brushes they hold a ton of paint but yet you got this nice little sharp point at the end. Got tons of paint. See how we're starting to turn that even more greenish? That's that verdigris pale green. Look at that, right in here. Let's drop that. Bang. See how that's sort of almost a lighter green right there? Hey there, Mario. How's it going? How's it going? So this is one of five figures right here. So what we did was we took the contrast paints and mixed those together in different forms, different colors. Just dropped them on our five dark sword guys here. And now we've been doing some wet blending here. Actually, while we're at it, we are going to get a little bit more of some highlights. Just a few here. Now, if you're, if you're wondering why I'm doing more on this guy than the others, there's a plan here. I'm hoping to be able to do some snow effects for you. Now, a lot of you have seen them before. I've got tons of other videos on YouTube that have the snow effects. Tons of other videos. But I try to, when I can throw it in, I try to throw it in. Now... You can catch some other previous live streams. Now, where are my cave dwellers here? Where's my cave dwellers? Ah, here they are. So this was actually the last live stream. This is where we were mixing the flesh tones with the contrast paint. So we did some of these snow and blood effects right here. And we used actually the contrast paints to make some of the blood effects. So that is actually the most recent live session. And if you want to get notifications for these live sessions, yeah, what do you do? The subscribe thing, and I guess you click the bell for notifications. I didn't, I was not aware of the bell thing at first. I, there's folks that I subscribe to myself, and I seem to get their notifications just fine. I don't remember clicking on the bell, <laughs> but apparently you do that. And, and you're able to, I guess, get more notifications or more quickly or something like that. So going on his boots here. And let's see if we can find ourselves a smaller brush here. Now, I can do this with the contrast paints, but I actually I'm going to break out another one of my favorites here. So this is the Reaper Brown Liner. It is not for painting lines. It's for those of you that, again, that have seen my other videos. 
you know that this is the equivalent of my contrast paint the brown liner the gray liner the sepia liner you know I absolutely love those now as he's got some real deep crevice things going on with his eyes here so bear with me if I have to kind of turn this into a wacky direction here to be able to do this also going to try and get a little bit of precise stuff going on here and it's hard to tell <laughs> I'm losing track of which is the brown liner and which is the contrast paint but it's what's nice is that it's got really heavy duty pigment again sort of like the contrast paints but you can paint very thinly with it and yet it still has coverage so that's and and the main reason I did the liner uh, the contrast paints is for folks again that have a tough time getting their hands on the Reaper colors so apparently outside the US it is not easy to do that and I thought well just about everybody can get GW stuff if I can make the GW paints work why not give that a try so I'm just trying to get that off of the massive amount of dark colors there here let's see if we can't add a little more of a light to some of this and somewhere ah here's another one of my favorites that the Reaper clears there is red, magenta, yellow, blue, green, and purple. These, they're not clear paints. They're just, they should have called them high intensity paints or pure process colors or something like that. Anything but clear. Because you see, it's not clear. It just, it's, it's a highly pigmented paint. Well, what is it? Chimera or something like that did like super pigmented paints. Well, these are just fine so I'm gonna do the whole winter pink nose thing on them here and actually some pink in a few other places because what that'll do is even on the forehead even there sometimes hit it with a little bit of the here, let's get some get some darks in there and then we'll go back the other way around with some lighter tones here and just that starts to get him pretty pretty far along and what's the thing that we have not seen on the palette whatsoever it's the question I ask about every time around this time we haven't seen any white there has been none of oh where's my pure white there's been none of this we have not put this out on the palette yet no reason to yet hey there boss how's it going so we've got this guy he's pretty far along pretty far along we're gonna let him sit aside but see we even got some green here in the boots let's grab somebody else like potentially maybe this guy because then we could maybe do a little bit of freehand on him maybe you can see that we got a touch of green here in some places here's our our gray mix that we made here speaking of green let's grab some of that so this is again contrast paint mixed with a little bit of maiden flash some of these reaper colors and we're just gonna get right down into it here gonna blast right into that you can see that I'm taking the side of the brush so it turns a number eight round into a much even bigger brush because hey you know the big old craft brush wasn't big enough let's make it bigger uh, now that we're starting to almost drift into the palette sludge color which most folks know it, it's such a favorite of mine I've almost thought of making bottles of it except palette sludge is a very unique color 
it's only made on your own palate. What is palate sludge? It's pretty much <laughs> all the colors of your palate mixed together. And if you've been sort of sticking with a certain color palette, as far as your overall color choices, your palette sludge looks a little bit different. So these look like they're actually metal bits here. So let's get some of our... What the heck? Let's just change gears and we'll throw, instead of the maggot white this is sort of the same thing this is a little more greenish but it's pretty pretty much on the light side oh let's just plop it over here hopefully people can still yeah you can still see that so let's grab that poof we're gonna go into here look at that that is contrast a mixed contrast paint mixing with regular paint it's it sounds sedition it sounds like pure just it, it sounds like a revolution but wait a minute contrast paints are supposed to be revolutionary so we are revolting against the revolution or are we just revolting either way we're almost working like oil paint right here now the thing to know here okay now that we've started to use the pro acryl that paint, that when that cover, it covers. You know the the Reaper paints, the the Secret Weapon paints, especially those. They're really nice at doing some thin, sort of semi-translucent stuff. Well, Pro Acryl, it's a real pro at covering stuff. So here we're gonna throw in a little more of that. I think yeah, that's in a good spot for you. And this is effectively wet blending because one of the things the contrast paints do is, and any sort of, I guess, a glaze medium thing like that will do, keeps your paint wet for a little bit longer. And the Pro Acryls, that's one of their properties is that they do sort of stay wet a little longer. So we're kind of, we're maximizing the slowness of drying by the paints we're combining together. Here, let's plop a little on this sword blade. So in no time at all we've really been able to manufacture some decent shading on that. Let's turn it around. Let's hit some here except here again. I want to have more of a greenish bluish tinge here. Not sure why, but I do. And we're going to do the exact same thing over here. Once again, working with those number eight round craft brushes. You saw that when it came time for it, yeah, I, I grabbed the Winsor Newton Series 7. There's time and a place. But if I use that Series 7 more sparingly and let these brushes do... A lot of that grunt work, that the bulk of that nasty stuff, well, hey, that much more expensive brush is going to last a ton longer than it otherwise would. That's not a horrible thing. Here, let's, let's have some fun. Let's get some of that Leviathan Blue out there and really have some let's go that's the uh warp lightning green let's a touch of that in there too because we don't want it to be all just warm grays see i'm trying to follow folds in the cloth now here we need reflected light in there yeah it's black but it can't just be that dead black over there so I, hey i got my original mix here going to go in here like so and just get a little something here mm, take some of that and it just it's given me a little bit of of a reflection there it's not much if you're wearing a black t-shirt 
I don't know, in a mirror or something like that, just see how much reflected light there is on a... It, it's cloth. It's obviously not shiny. You'll be... You'll probably be stunned to see just how much potential reflection there is on a black t-shirt, a black hoodie, black pants, black coat. You would be really, really shocked. I know I was. I looked down and I said, what the heck's going on? Is this really black? What did I fade this in the laundry or something? And I said, no, that's just, that's the light. Yes, it's black. Your eye just kind of convinces you that it's black. I suppose if you were to put some kind of color meter on or something like that, it would never register as black. Here, so I'm going to take some of this. I see I've got a little something to fill in here. Well, guess what? Because I'm not in any kind of finishing stages here, I can do that. And I'm going to plop some of that where the hair is here. We never did get his beard at all. Now we did. More over here. But this is, again, it's mostly the contrast paint. There we go. Let's see if we can't hit ourselves some skin tone. So this is that skin tone we used before. I'm just going to take some of that greenish white color. Let's see what we can do with the skin tones here. And as soon as we start to pop some of this into the skin colors, the cloak is going to start looking darker. The colors that are looking so light right now are actually going to look darker. So I'm just, all I'm doing is getting my stream chat in a different area over here. Because for whatever reason, gosh knows why, it has a tendency to just die after a certain point. Alright, let's, we're just getting a little bit on the boots. Remember I got my sepia liner over here. We need a little more. That's all this is right here. Sepia liner. Reaper miniatures. I'll put it back over here. Let's mix it with some of that wild wood again. Like that. And now we'll just hit the boots here. So I really wanted to especially hit this one because I thought it'd be fun for you to see a little bit of freehand. Now somewhere I think I've got at least I hope I do. I got some of the Night's Watch cards sitting out here. Otherwise, I could just maybe enlarge one of the reference pictures. But now I need some gray for the my rocks down here. I guess another little thing to note that Dark Sword miniatures, when they're not a part of the George R. R. Martin series, they have a tendency to be part of a, I always called it a broccoli base. The George R. R. Martin figures, they come with, again, this is actually a metal base. It's part of the figure, but they're not actually, it's not one metal piece. You can choose to add those in or just make your own base separately. You can do that too. So here, let's get a little bit of Go back into this Leviathan blue here. Gonna hit that sword a little bit. Gonna hit this shield. Gonna give that a little touch of that blue. Maybe even his hair. Also gonna go into here on the on his clothes. I'm gonna go into here on his cloak. But that's all sort of semi-translucent. You can see it's not running down because we've got enough straight-up opaque colors in there. All right, do we? Yeah, we got enough of this. I'll we'll just play with some of this here and lighten up some of the skin tones here. Now, we've got our little... freehand that we want to do. So we've got your raven, the sword, and then I added in this little pattern right here. Let's see if we can play with that. 
obviously a different type of surface here. This is a little wider. So let's sketch that in. Let's sketch that in like this. And I think there was a second line here. Again, I want to keep it looking like the other one. And yes, that is a number eight round. 35 cent craft brush that we are starting to freehand with. And what I'm going to do is get me some dots here. The whole idea here is to try and make sure that this is spaced out somewhat regularly. And then we're going to draw some diamonds here. Just drawing some rough diamonds. Doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. But what you do want to have is make sure that it's not, you're not doing that thing where you make it, it's big over here and it gets smaller and smaller over here because you're trying to squeeze it all in. Now here, maybe instead of the entire raven symbol, maybe we just do more of the raven itself. And ravens kind of have this, they have really sort of wide that their beaks definitely are sort of a short beak. And then we sort of have to cut this off. And I think the eye is about right there. So we're just all we're trying to do is sketch this thing in. It's all we're looking to do. Because then we can then we can come in with some darks here. Let's get rid of some of that. And now that shield that looks so dark, well all of a sudden now we've got ourselves a dark raven over the top of that. And then here, oh look at this, I'm going to eliminate those dots that I used to mark my distances. Now I can go back with the the uh, what do you call it the fancy Windsor Newton series seven at whatever point. Nothing that says I can I can't do that. What I'm going to do though is get some of the maggot white back out there and. So this is kind of a mix of contrast paints and my regular paints here. Get some of this over here into a drier spot. I always like to have some drier locations on the palette. All right, with well that sketched in, we're going to start to accentuate some of our lines here. Focusing kind of on the center. Now here with the knot work, you want an over-under pattern, which is why we're doing this, because that's always going to be the over. And now we've got the under just kind of by default is left there. And just in a few seconds, you got yourself your knot work pattern there. That didn't have to kill anybody. That was not super hard, and it can you can go back and refine it and do all kinds of things to it. And now we can see we can get a little bit of a can sort of outline our our raven a bit here. Get some highlights or some shading onto that here. And it's almost a little bit on the purplish side so that it's still dark, but yet separates itself from that backdrop, which is, it just happens to be a little bit lighter. Here's 
Here, I'll get that beak a little darker. And here we'll actually go with a little bit of a shading there. And like I said, you can get in here and you can do a little bit of cleanup on your knot work pattern. Let's do let's do some gloves on him. We haven't done that yet. We got that sepia liner again. Now my arm's holding the shield, so not gonna see too much of that. I am gonna take my verdigris though and mix that in with my tan, because that could be could be a nice interesting change there. And what that's gonna do you think, well, green and tan, what in the world? Uh, well, just like that one cloak where I was getting close to where the snow was, and we wanted to put a little bit of a cooler color there to, to somewhat indicate that it was reflecting the snow, we're going to do a, we're doing the same sort of thing here. That's what that green is in there for. It also just gets puts a little variation into our color. You think, that is crazy taken that Sega weapon verdigris pale green to highlight brown leather boots. It just seems crazy. But crazier still, you're saying, wait a minute, you're going to put that on his sword blade now? And now you're going to put that on his cloak? And wait a minute, you're going to put that on his chain mail? This is ludicrous. But we're going to do that. And it'll be just... It'll be just fine. Because what we're looking for is that same variety. Now, where's our other guy here? Here he is. So again, you, we have that, that little bit of green there. We have almost more of a purplish blue there. And see that sort of secondary reflected light we got here where the snow is going to go? Now let's see if we can't do some of that here. So we've got that's the Leviathan blue, that's the contrast paint. And this is where we can, again, do a little touch of almost reflected light. Now this is supposed to be a piece of metal armor here. So let's start to get some metal indications on this. And then also our chain mail. These leggings here are all made of tiny, tiny, tiny bits of chain mail. And I'm being tiny, if I haven't said that before. Let's see if we can just dot the eyes there real quick. Sword. Because it has a little bit of the contrast paint left in it, see how it just, it's that semi-translucent effect that's going on. And like I said, no white has been harmed yet in any of this process. We have not used it yet. We've used some really light colors, none of which, absolutely none of which were white now I'm back to my tan. Back to my tan. I'm gonna try and lighten up some portions of the glove. Let's see if we can't get a little bit lighter on some parts of his tunic here. even on his the clasp of his cloak so I'm looking for is right along here sort of a little bank of highlights and it's gonna be a little strip right here that follows all the way down it's kind of from here all the way down that's that thing where you're sort of trying to guide the viewer you're sort of leading their eye, taking their eye by the hand and say, okay, start up here, work your way down, 
work your way down all the way down down to the snow here and then you let them out sounds weird but it is kind of a crazy phenomenon with people looking at paintings you have to draw them into the painting you have to give them enough to kinda keep them interested to stay there but then you gotta let them back out again and you need to sort of do the same thing with the miniature everybody always talks about oh you gotta get them in to wanna look at your miniature you gotta let them a uh, gotta give them an escape route too all right once again playing with that and now all we've got our brown liner here let's even something like that and then you now we can do something like this just go over the top of that sort of stain it do whatever we could put some chips in there if we really wanted to let's let's see if we can't play around with this face a little more gonna get some of the maiden flesh back out here poof so that is your reaper maiden flesh there mix it with our little custom skin tone that we were working on I want to do the same thing here with the nose give it that sort of winter red look so this is that got the clear red it was mixed with our skin color and just jot that down and when we go over top of it then he's not quite so much of a Santa Claus or a drunken Santa Claus looks like comic, st comic style at this date so yeah it looks like uh, the the chat on screen has gone away so I will just look over at my other screen no explanation as to why it does that but now that I know it does it it's a little easier to deal with so see we're getting a little more oomph in the face that's a highly technical painting term Let's see if I can't get the lights in the eyes where you can see it there we go there's the one can we do the other one without knocking over the palette camera so there's your other one Let's see if we cannot impart some greenishness to this so that's the warp lightning yeah warp lightning Gonna mix it into some skin color here some more Let's see. Can you see? Yep, you can see that. Start to. Because we don't want the beard to be such a huge, just a line with this stark line that goes from face and then bam, there's this beard. Don't want that. But we do want to get some lighter colors in the hair here. not too light here let's I'm gonna take some of our bluish gray let's see if we can't carve out some hair here and it doesn't have to be you're not necessarily trying to draw out every single strand of hair it's more indicating what's there especially since this this guy's hair has a little bit of curl to it so it's sometimes it's best just to indicate the hair again rather than trying to draw out every single every single hair and anytime I feel like it's too light I can always go back in with some kind of a glaze and tone it down it's you have to be willing to to work both ways yeah you know people have mentioned 
and there's a certain person too that I just happened to see because they they were playing around with the contrast paints and I happened to just accidentally run across one of their YouTube videos and someone said yeah he he's the comic style painter and I don't know if that's where he's doing kind of a lot of edge highlight I guess that's the thing but there's an awful lot of edge lighting or something that's involved because now some of it you know I've, I've seen then there's uh, like, like uh, Jessica bathroom when she does her and Paul Figgins when they're messing around with their busts they'll uh, they'll do that kind of crosshatch stuff and sometimes that's also referred to as comic book style all right here see we can get even lighter with our sword blade there we got to give him a little bit of an edge yeah well wow. that's some that's some of my original glaze that I had made there but see I can put some of that here now and start to now we're working the other way so that is that original gray mix that was the silish purple and the warp lightning green and see this is where we start to work the other way now and I can even make it a little more of a glaze add some water to it so now having done maybe seven ish hours of mixing the contrast paints with other just regular paints I'm definitely liking mixing them with the non GW paints and I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit more of a like so So just to see, it gives it a little bit of an aging pattern there. We want to go crazy. We want to do some chips or something. What the heck? Let's let's find a few places to do that. This is just with the contrast paint. That's just wildwood, right there. Here, let's let's find ourselves a spot here. couple over it obviously we want to focus somewhat on the edge and then maybe a few in the middle there and then let's give them a bit of an edge here like that so there's your kind of do that little bit of under highlighting on some of your chips there Oh, let's see where is ah here we go that's my it's my scorched not my scorched brown that's an old GW color that is my brown liner just looking to get some some eyebrows there and now let's see if we can't get some eyes in on them here can you see that just about gotta hold it upside down Sometimes you just got to play around with just the amount of water you got on your brush. So there's one eye. There's your second. So now he's got himself some eyes. Do we need to add a little touch of pink to some places here? Might add a little bit to the forehead there. See if I can't get a couple of highlights on his glove. Yeah, and then I can always, like I said, go back in. Do some darker glazes like we were starting to do here let's let's see if that'll work on his beard so that's the brown liner here's some of our original that's that contrast paint mix that we had made yeah let's do some stuff maybe on the beard let's do some stuff on the hair and add even a little more water to that and let it do its thing. Even gonna let that get into 
our cloak here. Nothing wrong with making adjustments. Now, what is where things can go haywire is you just you keep making them for almost no reason. Epic Duck Studio, that sounds a like black outline and cross hatching. Okay, yeah. I just, I couldn't remember who the heck it was because, well, I don't really get to see too many YouTube videos because, well, I can either make them or watch them. There's really not enough time for both. I wish I could watch more. I love my model railroading. I love to watch the model railroading ones because I learned a ton about terrain and basing. So here again, we're getting, going back in here with some darker glazes. It is take the black. It is not necessarily take the dark gray. I'm going to see if I can't solidify the line of hair there. Now the beard does need some, it needs some lights in it. It's tricky because I don't want it to become a gray beard. But you gotta get some kind of lights in there and that's just about as far as we can go. I can try a few more lights in some places on that beard, but like I said, gotta beware making it look too gray. Let's see we got ourselves some some freehand on there. We got ourselves some shading. We got ourselves some reflected light. And that's yeah, you know, we've just we've been working on these these two of the five. And wasn't all that long ago that he looked like that. So that was your initial just blast of contrast paints there. Then we started to mix in the regular paints with it. We started to get more into the mid-tones. See, we added so that greenish blue in there. Started to add tan in other places. This is again more of the greenish gray here. We did our freehand here, then we weathered that did the face and again this that the flesh tone is essentially a combination of regular paints and the contrast paints it's definitely very possible to use them together and hopefully this just it gives people i don't know the like the all clear like the, hey it's okay go ahead and mix those together because there's a lot of people that just they hear that you can't I don't know where the heck they're hearing it but they hear it from somebody who heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody who heard it from somebody who probably never tried so that really again that's not going to help you very much now what I am going to do real quick like here is I'm just going to throw my my cover on this real quick and now we're gonna play real quick with that so let's just mess around with these so that folks maybe can get a chance to see so this is the crushed glass realistic water from secret weapon so I'm going to do is make sure we got that. So now I'm going to grab my other one here because see where it says do not shake. Well, it's written here in a little tiny thing. Do not shake. What's the first thing we do when we grab a jar of paint? We shake the heck out of it. Well, don't really want to do that with this stuff. So now I'm going to grab something here that can hold both my water effects is that what he calls it realistic water now notice the label on here where it's it says yes warning contains crushed glass so that is crushed glass it's not little plastic beads 
and now you're gonna and you'll see as we pour this out see those start to bounce around a little bit so let's just start with a little bit start with a little add more later you'll you'll be so glad you did all right so we got a clean brush here I put these separately and the reason why I use this stuff let's start can you see that okay you can see it now you can watch the palette camera up there it's actually sharper there but watch what happens so look at what happens when I mix a little actually I am going to do this because I can so see how that looks like slushy snow right there now watch what happens when I mix more see how that starts to fluffing up there look at that there, let me get that on camera for you uh, there we go see how fluffy that is just a second ago it was darn near melted snow there's other snow effects that can simulate the white fluffy snow really well probably cheaper than this but you can't get any variation in your snow see here now we're sort of in between sort of in between now we're gonna move the palette back get you out of the way and we're gonna add this right here and you can see how it's a nice puffy nice and puffy see we draw this down but now look at see how it's semi-transparent there it's a little bit translucent it's just the other snows just don't do this so I'm gonna put down some more and watch what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna push that up and if need be see I can almost have that turn into slush so I'm just I'm fading out the snow the white fluffy snow it just it starts to just look like a big old blob yes these are more like a blob but you can so you can shape these look at that yeah, you can shape that really nice here's some more but you can you can see underneath it can you yeah here you can see through that snow the white puffy any other effects that the Vallejo stuff which I enjoy the woodland scenic stuff which I enjoy I haven't tried the was it Valhalla and Blizzard yet I'm going to I'm going to try some of that on my my own uh, Song of Ice and Fire figures but I've already done a whole bunch of miniatures this is again it's a commission thing I've done a bunch of other ones I gotta match them so see, look, I can pile that. The more I pile on, see how the more lack of transparency there is. But look at how it, see how it kind of carries over the edge of that there. And you know, I can even put some on his shoulders here. So I'm going to make that extra. So I've kind of made it kind of crystalline there. Here, let's just. See how there's some snow on his shoulders there. And I'm gonna scrape some of this off. So it's almost like there's some individual little snowflakes, and because it is, I'm literally depositing tiny crystals on his shoulders. See that? See that little crystal hanging off the brush right there? Let's see if I can't get that on him. Yep. I just got that crystal that's stuck to his, his cloak now. So I'm going to go back over here to the chat. Uh, if you like the railway stuff, you have uh, Luke APS, right? Yeah, actually there's one of his things he where he did the the ice effects where he was taking sort of the resin and then pouring that and then letting it cure and then he broke it into little pieces and then he actually took the paint and made that bubbling ice underneath it like the water sort of freezing and the air bubbles coming up I got I gotta try me that probably for terrain for this game look at this 
Look at that. Check that out. That is like individual snowflakes on my look at that. as I turn him. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. Because as I turn it's glinting in the light. You just I've tried doing that with the other snow effects that I have and it's just not quite the same thing. See there we go. There's some more. You know, like I'm even gonna look at this. I'm a, I'm stippling snow and ice onto his cloak down here. I'm literally stippling snow and ice there. That is really fun. Now you know why I got this kind of greenish color down here. And if you're wondering why, why the heck is he putting the snow on his cloak? Well, I, I walked to the store in an urban environment, just walking a block and a half to the store. By the time I get to the store, I look like the abominable snowman. Every part of me is just covered in, in snow. So let's let's take our other guy here. Now I'm gonna get out some more of the again, this is the realistic water. You don't want to put too much out there. I will say that working with this stuff is a it's a feel kind of a thing. I can't tell you mix two drops of this but three drops of this. There is no such thing. Every time I use this I learn something new because that stippling thing that I did on the cloak on that guy never done it before you have seen it for the first time live here so we got ourselves a nice big old blob here nice big old blob that I will now deposit right over here and I do suggest sometimes maybe have it a second brush for manipulating this you know and one brush <laughs> one brush is your shovel and the other brush manipulates it. You could even have a footprint in there. Now I can tell you I've got a bunch of the army painting tutorials that have snow effects. I do have a shaggy dog blood and snow effect video. Here I'm gonna get some of this right in here. So I'm just I'm kind of scraping that up. I got a big old blob here. Nice big blob. And then I flatten it out, manipulate him, kind of connecting my snow piles there. Like I said, I'm just literally carrying that snow, moving it around. So I can even have some of it kind of go over his boot. Here, I'm gonna make sure that those are somewhat connected there. And now, just like I did on the other one here, I'm going to get my snow like this and try and get some snow on his boots. So I said I just got myself a nice chunk on his boots right there. Here, let's get ourselves another another batch. Pile that up. And now we're going to give some here. And this is where, let's say I wanted to use the Green Stuff World Intensity inks. That's where I'd have to seal them or do something because that snow would not, yeah, you would lose the snow effect. It would not be light little crystals like that. Now here's another thing too. I'm taking some of the dry crystals. And so I can get them to stick. It's almost like I'm using the previous application as glue. So I see I'm gonna take some more of these. So this kind of that's almost like the more fresh fallen snow. And I'm gonna add a little more here. So you can see all of those, that's basically pieces of crushed glass in your snow mix there. Look at that. That is really nifty. You just, again, you cannot get that from those other types of snows as, as neat and as convenient as they are. Uh, when it dries, that is rock hard. It's not going anywhere, but see the, see how that kind of, the light bounces off of that? 
it looks literally like a, a bunch of little tiny crystals so like I said it looks a little bit dark here but when it dries it's gonna look like that other it's gonna look like the other stuff now let's open up our palette again here don't want to spatter this on stuff so just let me get that open there it seals really good there's our palette back again uh, not Luke see Luke Tauen. Ah, okay. Luke Tauen. Um, that's the name of his YouTube channel then? Sorry, I had to drink some water there. A couple hours of talking and that really messes up the voice. Alright, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of my way. Let's, let's get back into painting. So now, of those five, you can see we've got two of these guys. Pretty far along. We've got some freehand here. We added snow in a couple of different places. We've manipulated, done some wet blending here. I'm going to take maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll start playing with these couple of guys over here. Again, I am not going to be able to finish all five of these. That's going to be a little bit much for me because I've already been at this almost a couple of hours. Here, let's play with our skin tones again maybe we'll just do a couple of faces here real quick so that's a, I realize that is a glove that is not skin over there I'm just gonna do these couple of guys here I think I'll maybe just give him some lighter here and we know he has gloves too so we won't do too much we won't do too much of that on his gloves. Now the when you clean out your water, those little crystals of glass, they will settle to the bottom. So you will have little tiny grass glass crystals in your water. So just be aware of that. And I mean just I feel like I gotta say it for the people for whatever reason who lick their brushes, I strongly suggest you not lick your brush after doing the crushed glass. You shouldn't have to say it, but sometimes you do. Now we're just we're doing the same thing, mixing that. That's the maiden flesh mixed with the contrast paints that gore grunt of fur, I think it was. Letting that get a little bit lighter here and there. And it's darn near wet enough to let me do some wet blending almost wet enough to do that now the the one thing and Bethany knows this and Justin knows this that this was spoke June was supposed to be oil painting month instead it turned into contrast paint month well I don't know if July is going to be oil painting month but I sure as heck hope part of it is and maybe August will be I don't know but because people are asking me so the contrast paints do they save a lot of time well what saves a whole bunch of time is oil paints because I had a couple of patrons ask me they, they're new they had just signed up and they said, hey, you know, a couple of these series, am I missing an episode? There's only four episodes. And I said, those are the oil painting series. And oil paint saves you so much time painting. What takes me five episodes with acrylics only takes me four episodes with oils. And the episodes are just as long. So it's not like it's you know, four four-hour episodes. No, they're four episodes that are around two, two and a half hours but I can just do so much more mixing so much more mixing I'm gonna steal myself some green over here and that's just that's just straight up warp lightning green being mixed into my brush here and you can see we're we're getting a little bit of green into his onto his face there definitely want to get under his eyes with that because we're talking about, remember, reflecting the ground. And oh, look, I'm going to take some of that same green 
and we're going to start to use that elsewhere. So it works for the face, it works for the pants, it works for the cloak. And again, this is not a dry brush at all. Not a dry brush. We're just basically kind of prepping and priming that surface because here's some of that contrast paint mix. And now we're going to wet blend these two together. Because I was talking so much about oil paints, I felt like I wanted to do a little wet blending. So I'm kind of, I mean, in lieu of being able to use actual oil paint, I'm sort of turning my contrast paints into oil paints. See how we're, we're kind of wet blending all this stuff together? This is what I could do with the oil paints. Now, it requires a little bit of prepping of the surface here, whereas oil paints, you can just kind of do that. Look at that. It, I mean, this is seconds. It takes freaking a couple of seconds to do this. It does not have to be this hard or that hard. This ain't hard. This is easy. Here, we're gonna, that's some of my lighter gray mix from another figure, whichever one that was. Look at this. Got the brush almost sort of semi in filbert mode here. Let me drag it down. And again, not a dry brush. It's called a feathered brush stroke. So I'm just feathering that brush stroke down. Here, let's also oh, some of that verdigris from Secret Weapon. All right, good. You can see that. So I'm just going to draw this down. And you can see. The, this sort of grip on the brush, where it's just cradled in my hand. You know, do you see this? You're not seeing the death grip. I see this going on. Like, are they trying to carve that figure with with the bristles of the brush? What are they doing with that? It looks like they're trying to. It's like they're using a drill press or something. Just, it's hard, easier on your hand. The reason I can paint this many hours every single day is because I'm not doing this. And, and sorry if that uh, sounds a bit earnest there, but it's it's the truth. Well, in art school, it was pounded into our heads a little less nicely. <laughs> Essentially, if your hands were caught like this on the ferrule of the brush, this metal part like this, the brush was taken out of your hand, and you just kind of sat there looking real stupid. I'll see you later, Bethany. Oh, more building. Oh, let's see. Inhaling crushed glass is a different story. Yeah, now, you could wear, well, you don't necessarily have to wear, like, my airbrush mask for that, but, the, like, the little surgical mask or something, if you're worried about it, you can do that. But the reason why I've got that little container that you saw, see, if it moves around, it's got a little, and all it is is the lid from a butter container. That's all it is. But once this all solidifies, it's not going anywhere. You just chuck it in the garbage, you're done. The other thing you can use is the clamshells, like blister packs, right? You can use those too. So just like we did with our other Night's Watch, we start to work in some lighter colors here. We're mixing into some of those grays, but let's not forget our blues. So this is Leviathan Blue here. Oh, where'd you go? You were over here. So that's what's sitting over there. That's your Leviathan blue. And when I mix this in there, see how that kind of turns an interesting little bit of a purplish color? Oh, gosh. Shadow gray. That's the color. That's what I'm thinking. Now look at, see, we got a nice little filbert type brush going on there. And now, right here on his pants... Look at that. We can just semi-translucent. And look at that. Over the top of that green. It's contrast paint, right? It's transparent. I've started to use the term a dry glaze. So that is something that I've I, I've only experimented with recently with the contrast paints. Is What if they're not so wet? What if you're not just splashing them on like they say you have to use them? You don't have to do anything. You contrast paint. Now look what's going to happen. Look at that. See how that darkens that down? 
but we're not going to get those weird water type marks. You're not going to get that pooling or whatever because it's not wet. It's wet but not wet. And I hope these sort of things, I try not this to throw down like, okay, you do this step, then you do this, then you do this, and you always get this. I try to say, what if you try this? Because then maybe you'll do your own, well, what if I try this? And you'll try it out, and maybe you'll come up with something that I haven't thought of. And and, and feel free to, to shoot me a note or something like that. Say, hey, I tried this. This was cool. Did you think of doing this? That That's fantastic because I love seeing what other people do with stuff. I just don't often get the chance to see that. So, yeah, this is just the... The wild wood stuff here, all I'm looking to do is sort of reinforce a few glazes here. Now we're going gonna to go over these gloves a little bit. Just get some darks in some places. Inside of this cloak's got to be bluish, more bluish here. And I want to I want to tone down a few things here. So again, this is that contrast paint that has been there, right over the top. Say so we just tone that down. I can wipe some of it away. Or here again. Now let's let's get a little more. Some more darks in some of those places. Again, it is Night's Watch after all, so it has to be somewhat darker. Yeah, let's get a little more. That's the Maiden Flesh mixing it with that Leviathan Blue. That on screen for you, it looks like it. All right. Once again, as I work my way down here, I have to think there's going to be a pile of snow here. Better do something to reflect some of that. And I know people, because they'll, again, I never really watch the show. I've only seen a few scenes of it here and there. They'll want to paint things like the way they saw them on the show. But a lot of that, they're using crazy camera filters on that. They're doing an awful lot of things. If you were to just, some would just take a regular picture of those folks filming those scenes. They're, the colors of the outfits wouldn't look anything like what you see on screen. So what I'm trying to think of is what would be the actual result of walking around in the snow. So here's that verdigris. It's just a touch of it here doesn't have to be a whole lot and now uh, there's these clasps here I want to get a little bit on there I want to get a little bit of that verdigris back into the face again so we get that sort of that greenish look to some of the skin tones and I've always got that's why I like these little containers here that's the the wild wood And I can just I can keep going in here. I can remove some of that. Like that. Like that. Again, in the, the gloves here if I feel like it needs to be darker. Now let's play with our let's play with our metals a little bit. This is a yeah, here we go. This is kind of a fun Go it's just a sea foam green. There's nothing fancy about this. Good morning, Kujo. How's it going? Yeah, that's you can always just paint it. I it kind of scares me how often people will just strip miniatures down instead of just painting over them and kind of using it as an underpainting. So that's the Space Wolves Gray mixed with my Oh gosh, what was that? Mint green there? Yeah, mint green. Let's let's do some stuff with the sword blade here. So another reason I wanted to get to this guy. And the idea is 
Well, we want to do some of that wet into wet stuff, right? So you can see, see how that's glossy there on the end of the sword blade, which means now I can get some paint into that. Start to push that around here. Let's get a little more of my contrast mix in here. A little more of my mint green. Now I'm going to work the other way. Can you see that? Yeah. I'll go the other way with that. And here, let's get some of this some of this gray. So we're just going to draw this down. Now let's go back to let's go back to our maggot white here. Like so. Here, get some of that mixed in. Where you can see it. Yep. Now let's see what we can do here and just giving this a little bit of shiny. A touch of shiny. And where's there we go. So over here. I'm going to do something like this. So you see we got light to dark, light to dark. They, they just kind of work in opposition to each other. So I can go a little more here. And we can go, I don't want to go too intense on this side of it. Can you, yeah, go, you can see that. Don't want to go too much. And again, that's a number eight round craft brush. Here, let's get a bit of the sword edge. Sword edge. Just a touch of that along the edge. Still have not used white anywhere. Here, you know, maybe I'll use it on the sword blade to get that final little bit of pizzazz. And now this is where I want to have a little bit of a, see how that's broken up there? It's not a continuous line. It indicates maybe there's a little disruption in the horizon line or that maybe there's a little bit of a chip there or something like that. You know, the sword's been used. Let's let's double down on some of that. That's good. So again, we don't want it this to have to be we don't want it to be super, super smooth, polished kind of stuff. Because it is you know, it's the Night's Watch. They're not supposed to have super fancy. They're not Lannisters. They're not Kingsguard. Here we go. Now, like I said, those army painting tutorials, those are on the Patreon page. That's the $15 pledge. I think that's going to be scrolling across the screen pretty soon. And that's just me on Patreon. Patreon.com, James Wapple. For your, as soon as you sign up, if you're, if you're a new subscriber, you get a whole bunch of videos, and by a whole bunch, uh, you are. I'm on Army Series 10, so right there alone, uh, 10 times 5. That's 50. That's almost 100 hours of video. That's just the Army Painting Series. Then there's a good 35-ish hours of Dark Sword videos. So you literally get hundreds of hours of videos. And I, I'm not kidding. That's not an exaggeration. That's actually an underestimation. I, I, one of these days, I'll have to just kind of go on to YouTube <laughs> and say, all right, total up all of my videos. And how many minutes is that? And, and let's see if the number they have numbers that are big enough to count them all. So that's what happened when you join the Patreon page. 
you get that. And you also get some of the, like those on the workbench videos that I've been making I talked about early on here. And that's where I just do experiments, where I say, you know what, I'm going to see, do intensity inks do the same thing as the contrast paints? Can I mix this with this? Can I do this with oils? Never tried it before. So I try and do more experimental things that I just haven't tried before. And that's a big part of the Patreon page. You also get to see me doing just regular work. So you find out what's that that's like. So those of you that are maybe kind of aspiring to do this yourself, maybe as a living, I sort of take you through what what it's like what the mindset that you need to be able to trick yourself into doing that every day. So that's the Gore Grunt of Fur mixed with just a touch of our lighter coat. All I want to do is a little indication of a belt loop there and a little touch of brown there. Not much. Not much whatsoever. Let's get a little bit of that reddish brown in the hair. Now let's see if we can't do some eyes and other assorted things on him. Grab a smaller brush and a little water here. One second. Okay. It looks like I still have... Yeah, I got some of my maggot white sitting over here. And yes, I do have the small brushes. I just use them very rarely. Obviously... The more of the grunt work I can do with the big brushes, the longer these little dainty ones are going to last. Let's turn him over here. So we got some eyes in there. Now, I can use the contrast paints, but I can also use, again, Reaper Miniatures, Brown Liner. There's brown, gray, blue. Actually, I like using blue for this. There's a red liner, and I really, really enjoy that. Actually, it works nice for doing the eyes and stuff like this. There we go. All right, I'm going to thin this down. This, The whole idea of the, the contrast paints, again, was to find a substitute for the Reaper liner and clear paints, which not everybody can get outside the U.S., so we're a little bit of an eye, eyebrow there. We're going to do the same here. And I may have to turn him in, into a direction that's harder for you to see, but I need to be able to see it too. Looks like you can see that. So I'm just trying to give him an eye that's looking off into a very, yeah, see he's kind of looking out ahead there. Now let's get back into our reds here. And remember how we did our little pinkishness on the nose. We're going to do some of that on him. Let's see if, yeah, that's still alive there. Is that on the screen for you? Now it is. Yeah, I don't want him to look like Santa Claus. But it's pretty interesting how doing that little bit of a pink coloration on some of the cheek. Well, it makes the face more interesting, obviously. Just gives you something more but between that and the green and the grays. It's a tiny little face. Most of it's just beard and hair. And doing that little bit of extra makes a huge difference. So there we go. Let's get a little more of a highlight in a few places here. Let's see if we can get that on his cheekbones, too. Is that where you can see it? I think that'll be better. That's better. And sometimes you just you have to thin it down. Let's get the other cheekbone here. end of the nose there we go so again not it doesn't have to be really 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 difficult does not have to be 
And we got the you know the clasps here. We we have all of these little studs right here. I'm just looking to see there I think there's a bit of a oh a buckle there, so we put that on. Let's see if we can't get some fingers on this glove here. That where you can see it. I also want to get a little bit of a light on that sword hilt. Now the dark sword figures, they are definitely true scale. And for those of you that don't know what true scale is, well, the hands and the feet. Their, their hands are normal human sized as opposed to baseball gloves. And they don't have pumpkin heads. That's just that is the nature of true scale. They're still the same overall height and size as a twenty millimeter heroic scale figure, but that is the difference with dark sword figures. Now I, I'll show you. I'm pretty sure the Song of Ice and Fire still. I, I think to me they trend more towards true scale. But what I'm going to do is just set him there, and we're going to grab our unit of Night's Watch. So, so Song of Ice and Fire right here. Let's grab one of these guys here. So there's this is one of the ones, I think this is Series 5, Series 6, 6 or 7, I think, painting the... Night's Watch. Again, five episodes on that. But you can see they're they're kind of running here. But this was done also in acrylics. And I try and show you how to get more variations in your blacks. And you can see we got, again, the cloak. You can almost see that same bluish gray in the pant legs here. And then completely apart, but yet, and you can see the stuff where we piled the snow on top of them. So... But we've we've done this kind of thing before. Here, let's get this out of harm's way. Get my brush back here. Let's see if we can do some fun things with that mint green right here. Let's see if we can't do some fun stuff with the folds because we are. Yeah, we got the snow that's that's down here. So, so I'm actually gonna get some of that bluish highlights now on his boots. Maybe it almost gives him a touch of shininess in a way. All right, what do we got here? Yep, let's get the folds over here. We're kind of missing some stuff in these folds here. Yeah, and we, let's see, I think I started this around 2 in the morning here, so we, and you have to figure that there was time spent explaining things and setting up the stream, so this is basically probably even a little less than 2 hours, and we've been working on 5 miniatures at once. we got 2 of them that are really, really far along, they've got their snow effects on them already. Now we got a third guy who is starting to approach that. And again, they all they, they all started out like this. We had five miniatures that looked just like this. And now we have definitely something more. We've got snow. We've got reflected light here. We've even got some some freehand. I'm gonna keep going with some of this mint green once again to get a few few little lights and if I ever feel like I've gone too far with it I can take the wild wood and hit that again now what I do need to do here let's I'm gonna see if I've got enough of my nope I'm gonna get the sepia liner back out here on the palette Put that right over there. 
and I'm gonna get some lights on his beard here. I don't want it to be just all dark. I wanna get some light. There we are, because we had hit it with the wildwood several times. That sounds kind of strange out of context. I'm going to actually use a little bit of the maiden flesh to lighten that. Can you see that? I think so. And as I said before, I don't want to... For whatever reason, a lot of these guys have curly hair, so I... Trying to minimize that that thing where I'm just picking out individual hairs and trying to draw individual strands on a guy that's only an eighth of an inch, one and eighth inch tall. That's there we are. Here, let's get a little more of the CP liner back in there. Just trying to pick out. See, like right there. basically almost like a little one point of light on some of that the curly hair the, the same thing on the beard on his mustache just picking out a few points of light or it's somehow the the light is picking up that that little bit of curl in the hair And by going with the sepia liner as opposed to, say, some form of a yellow, you don't necessarily want him to be like the, like a Viking blonde or something like that. We just we wanted to have a little bit of variation from his hair to the other, because this is a whole group of figures that I'm working on here. There we go. And it's interesting, it's just, it's so different painting these from the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. And I just, I've got it in my head that it's a Song of Ice and Fire miniature, but yet it's, you know, this, this sculpted by different, different companies. So it's a little different look. Now we're going to go back, we got that, the Shilish Purple. Now this will be, this is something we haven't done yet. Yeah, look at that. Let's do some of this. So let's get some purple in here. And like, what in the world? But it's not going to look purple. When that goes on there, it's just going to register as gray. Part of the reason, we've got so much of that green in some places, that when you see that muted of a purple, like, oh, here in his cloak, it's not even going to register as purple. Another place we're going to put it is here on the sword blade. I always like putting purple on my sword blades. Kind of always have. You're going to get this. It's Again, the idea is to have a touch of reflected light. I'll put some of this on his glove. Some on the cloak. So see, we got almost a green on this side here. But over on this side, now it's more of a purple. And nothing complicated whatsoever. Is this my, where's my Shilish? Yep, so I just took some of the Shilish purple here. And it's being mixed with my made flesh here. That's all it is. We're going to do some more. And that, that other Night's Watch group that I showed you, there's, when you look at them in isolation, there's parts where you can really see the purple. But you got to be looking at those things. you got to be staring at them and really looking for that purple. It's there, but you don't see it. Oh, gosh, does that have to be another one of my uh, painting parables? It might have to be. You can't see it, but it's there. I'm going to say I want some purple in here in the interior. And what that does, see we've got that blue. Well, that's sort of facing the sky. And now we've got this sort of interior until it gets blue again, where it's going to be facing some of that snow there. 
So let's let's do the snow effects again so that we're not seeing this figure in isolation. So where's my cover? I'm not going to tamp it down quite as much. There's my snow. Our do not shake realistic water. Back to our... We might throw a little more again of the crushed glass. So we're going to throw out a touch of this. Poof, like that. And always close the lid immediately. I made the mistake of not doing that, and that was not a spectacular idea. We'll just put it that. It was not a grand idea. So we have another, again, a brush that's, that's clean, because if you use dirty paint water, your snow is going to look like a paint water. And pallet sludge snow is not as fun as pallet sludge glazing. And this, again, the reason we do this is we can get melted snow or we can get puffier snow. So this is going to be a little more melted here. A little bit more on the melted side. And oh, look at that. See how that can hang over the side? Like maybe it is melting a bit. It's really tough to do that with your typical. Yeah, look at that. See how it just it goes right underneath his boot? It's like he's standing. He's just actually stepped on the snow there. Now I'm going to need a little more of my crushed glass for whatever reason. That, that ran out, but you can always add more. Can't take it away. Once it's out on that thing and mixing with the the water effects, you might as well just use it all then. So now we're mixing this up so it's a little bit more of a dry mix that we will deposit right here. Now we're going to move that around. I'm going to push that back a little bit. Now you know I didn't spend a whole bunch of time fretting about the color on the base early on. I just said, look, let it be dark. Because we're going to put this over the top of it anyways. There we go. Now I can do icicles, and I've done those on a lot of the miniatures too. That's really fun. I love doing icicles. Here, I'm going to get some more of this. There we are. All right. See, we got a nice, nice pile here. And the idea is, here, I'm going to get rid of some of it. But look at see how that's just kind of going over the side, almost like a little waterfall there. So now it's semi like an icicle there. Now let's do the same thing here on his on his shoulders here. I'm gonna scrape some of this away. And now I'm literally putting individual little crystals of snow on his back, like that. So right now the melty snow looks glossy ice to me. It looks very dangerous. Here's one of our guys. So this was after about an hour or so. It just it dries completely. Now again, I got my camera turned up the the brightness so you it the, it kind of bounces off the light here let's see what happens when I do yeah you can see the individual little crystals in there it basically looks like glass again I'll even show you some of the ones that I did oh gosh what a half an hour 40 minutes ago those look very different you don't have a super long working time with this that's why you just mix up a little bit. I learned that lesson the hard way. Mixed up a huge, big vat. Now, I was working on more like a terrain piece. So, that's why. But, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, you don't want to mix up too much of this all at once. So, I'm just going to set this over here. Now, this is the first one that we did. And I can already start to see the, the individual little ice crystals in here. 
Now, I'm going to go back. I'm going to just put a touch of a tiny, tiny amount here. It's, it's hard sometimes to get a little bit there. It's all I want. It's all I'm looking for. And I'm going to wipe, I'm going to find a paper towel here somewhere and get some of that out. Take some of these dry crystals here, and now I'm going to drop them on top. I don't know if that shows up, but it's almost like taking the snow flock. There we go. So I'm just adding, and those will stick in there because the snow is still wet. Now you do run the risk of kind of flattening your nice little puff balls, but see yeah, there's again ice crystals more little crystals here there we go and see how that just this will be then translucent you can even put icicles off of that and again I don't have all of the I wish I had my shaggy dog here and some of those other larger scale ones but let's see what we've got here that might have some some icicles hanging off. Here we go. So here we've got where is he? Whoop, there it is. So again, this is more of the the crushed glass here and then this is with some of the heavy gloss gel to make some icicles hanging off of those the trees there. Here's another one. So see, we've got ourselves a little icicle right there. A little icicle right there. So that's the crushed glass. Let it be a little bit more melted. And I took the the heavy gloss and just kind of dragged down, made some icicles. Let's see if I've got... Eh. Do these have any? No, these don't have any icicles. But what's nice, see, when you start to add the blood effects here, the paint just sinks down and into all those crystals. It gets absorbed instead of just sitting on top, which is kind of what happens when you add blood effects to the other snow. This act, it sinks all the way down through those crystals because it's it's got that space to seep down through there. And even now, it's already starting to look a little less glossy, and you can see those extra... Ah, see that? Those are those extra dry flakes that I added on. Look at that. We got the individual little flakes on his cloak there. So let's take away the crushed glass. And let's look at some of our guys. Let's hold this at different angles here. Yeah, you can see how that's already... This is already much more solidified. And like I said, it's only been about a half an hour. So I can take my cover off of this here. And I've had this last for days. And oh yeah, and a contrast paint sitting in these things inside a wet palette. Four or five days later or longer, they're still still wet and usable. They may be a little more thick than when they first started out, but still usable. So you can use these with a wet palette. You just kind of maybe have to make some modifications, I guess. Here, I'm just, I got some areas here where I got to get some extra shadows down in there. And now is my blog passing it? When you see the blog address, that's the wapeliasblogspot.com. If you want to see finished pictures of things, that's really a good place to go. Now I am for some of the the views of things in the videos. The, the regular hard copy videos. I I've, was put in touch with a really nice turntable. Again, Gilbert from the Styrene Syndicate, he was nice enough to send me an Amazon link to this beautiful turntable. So for things like units, I think the turntable is the way to go instead of trying to show a whole bunch of static photographs. So I just add a little bit of dark to that point there. If you want to have light, you got to have dark. And vice versa. I'm going to start to add some more darks maybe in some of these crevices here. 
Again, that's just the contrast paints. So I can take some of that away, brush that down. And a little more here again. This is sort of that, that dry glaze I was telling you about. It's contrast paints. But I'm I'm actually just painting with it. I'm not using it all watery and runny and that sort of thing. This is kind of semi dried out contrast paint, which is now like using a regular paint but super translucent. And that's how I'm going to try and do some of the weathering and streaking on vehicles and ships. So now that I know that works, because I'm doing it right now, yeah, that's going to be very handy. So again, this is the, it's the, the contrast paint, but look at how dry that is in comparison. It's not all runny and liquid. So it's just trying to find different uses for things. A different thought process behind them. It's just a tool. Why not find some fun different ways to use it? Now let's compare again. So this is one of our other original guys. We're going to go back to him. And I'm going to do some of that same kind of dry glaze over the top. It's that semi-translucent contrast paint that's not watery, not liquidy. And I'm just going to go in here and you can tell I can tone this stuff down. It's not pooling. There's nothing to pool. So I guess dry glaze, that's going to have to be a thing. And you know, here's again, this is another guy. What, 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, he barely even looked like this. It doesn't have to be super hard. And I know people want to use the contrast paints to be able to just go boom, boom, boom and paint things in, in a couple of seconds. Was it really that much more to ask to spend, okay, 20 minutes on something? Maybe a half an hour to get this. To me it is. Maybe other folks, not everybody likes painting. I understand that. I mean, these are geared for the folks that maybe want to get a little bit more for their eight bucks a jar. <laughs> and that's that's another another reason why I'm doing this, because these are not the cheapest things in the world. And if you can do some more stuff, yeah, I'm really liking this. Again, this is the contrast paint. I'm just let's see if I can show you what it looks like. See, it's that's not a dry brush. It's still very wet, but it's not this. It's not that. What it is, now we're, that's about where we're at. See that? It's still making things darker, but it's not anywhere near as intense as that. But even here, see we manipulate that. So that's, this is what you can do with that contrast paint. This is kind of it at 100%, and now this is maybe the contrast paint at 10%. And that's not even multiple layers of it. That's just one, one layer of it. Again, it doesn't have to be hard. It does not have to be hard. Also, it helps to have the basically homemade filmert, filbert brush. Filmert? That's, that's a new one. Not sure, not sure what my filmert brush is. Well, it is, it's, it's 4.30 in the morning here, and I've been up since... Well, feels like 24 hours. So words, words might turn into salad. Geez, even right now, this is getting lighter and lighter. Even just over these these few minutes here. And the, this is our other one here again. This is the one that we've got our our free hand on. We did a little bit of chipping on that sword blade here. Actually, I want to maybe get a little bit of the. Oh, what is that? The mint green on that sword blade. So I'm going to put some more of this out. There we go. A little bit. That's the Reaper mint green. Any kind of sea foam green will do. Even Reaper makes like seven other colors that are an awful lot like that. Yeah, don't, don't kill yourself trying to find that exact same thing. You don't have to. 
but what we want to do that's it I want to get a little bit of a basically a sky color in there so we're going to let that fade a little bit remember we got a purple over here let's get a little of that in here too now we've got that maggot white over here and remember we want this to be somewhat broken not a continuous line just break that up a little bit now I'm gonna do my sword edge here right along the edge of that and maybe at the tip here That's all I need. That's it. Don't go too crazy with it. So, oh, let's let's just play with some skin colors here while we've we got this brush going. The the faces on dark sword figures tend to be sculpted pretty well. You know, some reasonably fine detail there that's sort of why I select these a lot that's why I have if you look at the patreon page there is a basically a dark sword pledge level and I'm on dark sword 20 or yeah well I'm doing 20 and 21 simultaneously and I try and tackle specific little painting challenges non-metallics object source lighting how to paint reds how to get the most out of reds greens blues and then there's combo stuff you know, how do you do two different light sources for object source lighting and do non-metallic metal all at the same time how do you balance all that stuff at once basically things you should probably run across as you're painting Uh, transparent cloth. I could swear I've done a couple of those so far. At least a couple of the transparent cloth videos. So here's some of our original skin color here. And I just wanted to work back in some middle tones. Now I want to get some green. So that's the Warp Lightning Contrast Paint Green. Mixing it with my flesh tone. Let's get a little bit of green in here in this skin tone. A little five o'clock shadow going on. So once again, mixing contrast paint with regular paint. I'll try and spin this around. Now, I am having a hard time seeing that, but I want you to be able to see it. Now let's get this a little lighter here. And a little less green. Now, let's see, do I have enough of my red left here? This again, that Reaper Clear Red, there's enough of it left, just barely, to sort of do our little indication of the uh, pink nose. So I'm just going to get that in there to get it nice and red to start with, and then... Let's get this a little lighter, a little less pink. Again, working with what's already there. I'm going to throw a little bit of my Maiden Flesh back out here, so I just got it to work with. This is that Gore Grunta Flesh, or whatever the heck that was. Gore Grunta Fur, that's what it is. Gore Grunta Fur. So let's mix some of that with that. Again, mixing regular paint with the contrast paints. Getting back some of my lights here. So you see it's okay to work back and forth. You don't have to necessarily go all light to dark or dark to light. There we go. Now let's, I got my purple here. 
start to get some more colors into these robes here. That'll sort of be one of the last things we, we play around with because we did snow. We did all kinds of fun stuff so far. I'm going to take that maiden flesh, mix it in with the wild wood there. Here, let's get a little more wild wood. It's kind of a grayish brown. And in we go. Let's see if we can't do a little wet blending here. Sort of oil painting style. I'm going to grab some of that mint green. Throw that in there. And yes, a little bit of wet blending there. A little bit of wet blending. Again, sorry if you can't necessarily see everything here. Sometimes I just have to hold it to where I can see it and I can get to it. And sometimes that means away from the camera. So you can see just a couple of seconds. And it's not just about, yes, we have lights and darks. But on top of that, we have some color variation too. And I can go back like this. See, we got that uh, Leviathan blue. There's the Wildwood. A little more of the Leviathan blue. Let's see. Is that okay? There we go. And now, now like so. Here, I'm going to get rid of some of that excess. And we're still kind of wet blending here a little bit. So this is a sets a little more controlled application of your contrast paint. Didn't put anything up here. I had some semi wet paint going here and I just sort of pulled that down into my new contrast paint. So yeah, it's almost like we just shot that with like an airbrush or something. And that is that's a similar thing to what we were doing here earlier on, doing that wet blending type stuff. So again, a more controlled use. Now this is not as dry as what we were doing on some of the other ones. Let's see, look at that. Again, that's the contrast paint. That's all it is. But it's a more focused application. We're going to use that same stuff right here. That's a more focused application. It, it it's just that's all it is is contrast paint but we're just we're thinking maybe a little more strategically with it as opposed to just we're just gonna take it and go all over the place and, and believe me I've been there where you just <laughs> I don't know it, just in your head just I want to get this on here fast and you slap it on there and you realize you know if I had just control that a little bit more as I put it on there's a whole lot less extra work I'd have to do later on and sometimes you only realize that until that happens and I sometimes remind myself the hard way or it's like yeah maybe I should have just slowed down for a second and done that applied that a little more evenly now here again I'm gonna get some of that Leviathan blue. Look at that. That's almost like a purple right there. So we're doing the, the filbert brush thing. Now get rid of some of the excess. Now watch what's going to happen. Here, I'm going to hold this on its side. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So again, this is with contrast paints here. So it's not a dry brush. You can see how wet that is on my glove right there. But look what we're doing. We're just sort of scumbling this on. So see now we got this kind of light light to dark shading. I said I took even a little more of that away. So there's different ways of using this stuff. This is too light. Bang. We just toned it down. We say this is too light. Again, this is contrast paints being just sort of feathered on. 
Look at that. It's a very feathered brush stroke. Same thing here. On the underside of that hood. We're going to get over here with it. It also has some purple. But remember that purple and green make gray, or at least the eye thinks it's gray. We're actually putting purple on his hair. Because we can do that. Now this is that sepia liner here. I'm going to get on his bow. Just get some some lighter stuff working here. It doesn't, we don't want it to be super light. Nothing like that. Just going again, a little bit of the maggot white in there. Let's see what we can do on this bow. Give it a little bit of shape. See, I can, again, see there's a little bit of contrast paint in there now. It's almost like a little bit of flow improver there. See how we just sort of wet blended that? that bit. Turn it over. Get some of his boot here. So this is semi-translucent. That's what it, you can do when you're mixing the contrast paints with the regular paints. You get that semi-translucent look. Here we are. And this, it looks like a dry brush. Believe me, it's not. Now I'm going to do that same thing. That's that mint green. Let's see what we can do on his boots here. Just trying to give it a little bit of that. I, I don't want it to look like he's wearing vinyl or something. That's, that's a little too fashionista for the Night's Watch there. And again, for those just joining it, this here, these are Dark Sword miniatures. They are part of the George R. Martin line because you've got the all kinds of different masterworks. There's the Parkin, Parkinson. There's the the Larry Elmore. You got all kinds of different series. Again, check it out on the Dark Sword page. If you're watching this after the fact, you can go. Well, you probably have seen it from the very beginning, and you saw you saw where I introduced you to those way back in the beginning. Now the interior, good, you can see that. Here, let's get a little touch of lighter color there. You can see it's this, we're just gently, gentle, feathered brush stroke here with this paint that is it's not going to cover. If you were just to paint this on, like you're using uh, regular paint, not going to cover at all. But because we're using this feathered brush stroke and it just applies a little bit here and there, it, it's why I didn't get an airbrush. Why well, I still don't use an airbrush really very much to paint. I use it mostly for setting up the paint stuff or for priming, that sort of thing. Now here, I'm going to go back to that mint green. Ah, we got Space Wolves Gray over here. Let's see what we get out of that. Let's see what we get. Where are we at? Okay, you can see that. Alright, that's got a nice little touch of blue to it. Just a hint of sky blue. Again, it is, it's Night's Watch, so it is... We're trying to keep it in the range of black here. Now let's go a little, little further. I'm gonna take the mint green. That's the Leviathan blue. And that's gonna give me. Yeah, here we go. See it now. It's almost like a stroke of purplish blue there. I'm going to double down on that. I'm going to do a little more here. Again, the idea there's going to be snow there on that base, so we're trying to sort of reflect it a little bit. Let's do a little more. And what we've done there is what we were doing on this, because we knew there was going to be snow right underneath that, so that's why we got that lighter color. It goes light to dark back to sort of a light there. 
and we're now we're starting to think snow we're getting this ready for the the application of snow and that is the leviathan blue mixed with that with this right here now I do have to be careful not to go too far towards the lighter side with that and that can happen in a hurry especially when you're essentially trying to paint something that's supposed to be black so let's we're just adding a little bit of the maggot white to that to see if we can't find a few highlights along the edge of that cloak on the hood just a few cuz th now that's the other thing too about the dark sword miniatures these are not sculpted digitally they are all sculpted by hand which means you are going to get tighter folds like this whereas the digitally sculpted stuff you tend to get much more rounded broad folds it's just it's the nature of hand sculpting versus digital sculpting let's see if we can't get a little bit lighter on the upper portion of his chest and this is that same that's that mixed that is the mixed color now we're going to take some of that we're going to put it on his skin color goes somewhere it must go everywhere Let's get some of this on his boots, on the inside of the cloak. There we are. Now maybe um, I might do another snow application here. I've, I think we've done, what, three of them, I think, so far, applying the snow there. Let's see if I can't get a little bit of that bluish gray onto his forehead. We're going to grab. So this is, uh, we got Wildwood right here. That's some of the Leviathan blue. So you can mix those together. And we can even reinforce a few of our darks in some places. Here, let's get a little bit of that taken away. So we've we've gone from the middle to the light, and now back to the dark. And that is that's contrast paint. That's all it is. But when you basically treat it as a dry paint, guess what? It'll work that way. It can be done because well, we just did it. It's just been done in front of your very eyes. Now I am going to hoist this upside down because I need to just get a few glazes down in there. So it can be a controlled, <laughs> it can be a controlled substance. There you go. Now let's see if I can't take some of that wild wood now we got some of that gore grunta for I'm gonna try and darken down some parts of the gloves here can you see that okay good again that is just contrast paint and it's being used as a regular glaze so it can be it's I don't it may not be ideal for that uh, there's other things I would rather use but if you got to do it, what if that's all you have and it's your only option? Well, clearly it it can work if need be. I want to see if I can get some of that in his hair too. And it does seem that way. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to work. All right, now I got to get the this is the trickier part here there we go 
Just needed to... Ah, that's better. All right, we got some here that goes there. Yeah, we just needed to reinforce some of those darks there, too. Now, oh, I'm going to throw back out some of... This was always fun. So this is the secret weapon here, that verdigree. And we'll let that mix in with, again, some of our leviathan blue here. So this is that verdigree. It's just mixing with a bunch of different contrast paints. It's making sort of a greenish gray. And I'm going to let it get a little bit lighter here with... Where is my maggot white? There it is. Actually, the even the maiden flesh would work too. Get a little touch of that in here. So we're making just some more grays. This is, again, mix a lighter paint in with the contrast paint. And the whole idea of this is how much better does it work than, say, doing that same process with the GW paints. And I found a huge difference, a massive difference. I really love the, the Reaper paints mixed with it as opposed to the, to the GW paints. And, and you can go back to the other live sessions that I did on, what was it, the 15th? Well, basically the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. I pretty much did one every week, a, a live session. You can go back and check those out. And as I said, if you become a patron on the Patreon page, I've done, oh my goodness, many hours more videos using the contrast paints in a whole bunch of different ways. Mixing with all kinds of stuff. Well, if you want to find out about painting with oils and some of the other fun stuff, again, on the Patreon page, uh, I recommend the Army Painter Pledge because that will get you somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 hours for the tutorials. Possibly more. So it has to be something like 220. And that is no joke. Again, contrast paint, sort of watered down, using it as a glaze. Now, I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit of that green straight up into here. It's just a bit of an accent. And, yes, there it is. It's just showing up ever so slightly as an accent there. Now, let's get some... We need to get some reflected light in here. Let's see if we can't do something like that. Can you see that? Yeah. There we are. Add a little more here, and then same thing on the legs. So what I'm going to do here real quick quick is is another another round of snow you might have some new folks here so again this is my homemade palette i'm just going to throw the lid of my chinese food container on there we will get our snow container here so we've got the realistic water and again do not shake this is not regular paint i'm going to throw some of this out here running out of fresh space so I just put a little bit of snow out there just a little bit I almost shook the bottle <laughs> I almost grabbed that and shook it so here's some of my water effects again they are you can see they're separate from each other why because when you mix these two together and the more the water effects you have, the more melted snow you've got, the more... Look at see how that puffs up. See how that puffs up like so. Look at that. We got a nice big old pile of snow here. Yeah, let's get that, get that on our brush and plop that onto our base. And now we're going to manipulate that. So we're going to flatten it out. We're going to push it around. I didn't realize at first that you could do stuff like that with this. 
I just kind of put it on there, and it just kind of sat there like a big old puff ball. And I didn't realize you could manipulate it like this. So there's our initial thing of snow. And that and you can have a second fresh brush if you wanted to, but see how that turns more translucent there? That is the nifty thing, and it can be more melted. So see, this is going to be a little bit more of a melted snow here. See how it looks like it's just kind of melting, and see we spread that around. Now let's grab a little more here. Now I'm not going to actually do the same kind of piling up on his shoulder that I did on some of the other ones. You've seen that plenty now. You've seen plenty of that. Maybe let's just have a little less snow on this base. So there's a quick little lesson in snow. Now some of these we did a little bit more. And here's one where the snow, and you see, you can see, oh, now you can see those crystals now that it's drying a little bit. Oh, hey there, bluegrass. And we get that 4.50 a.m., yeah, it's 4.59. Uh, it, it's getting late, that's for sure. But I just, I'm trying to do as many little different, yeah. And now see, this is where I added those extra little dry crystals on top. Look at that, as I spin that around, yeah really fun. Now I am gonna I'm just gonna throw a touch more out here ever so a little bit a little bit there. That's it. And now I take my brush here. So I just dropped some crystals on there. This is wet enough that those crystals will stick to that. Here too. So that that's kind of the fresh ice crystals there. Maybe there's there's some of that fresh fallen snow on top of maybe some semi melted snow. So you can sort of layer this, and you can't put one layer on top of another layer. That's I, mean, I just did. So clearly that can be done. You know what I might do is, is actually attach some of that to the bottom of the cloak here. Again, see, I'm just sort of stippling that. Oh, look at that. So you have a nice little, some crunchy snow there on the edge of his robe, maybe even on his boots. So instead of putting it up here, I just said, oh, you know what, let's, yeah, let's get some down here. But the nice thing is it'll dry semi-translucent so you can still see the colors underneath there. And like I said, I've used this on a number of different units. So here is, speaking of Night's Watch, that's you know, Song of Ice and Fire. You can see the entire unit done in with that. Let's see if we can't use our controls here and zoom out a bit. There we go. Now you can see the whole tray. That's more like it. So this was again one of my army painting series. I paint all 12. I take you through the entire basing process. Now here is again the same snow. Now this has blood effects on it. So I haven't finished this. This is going to be another live session where I'm going to finish off so this, I actually used contrast paints for that blood effect there. Check that out. Now normally I use a few other things for it, but I said, can you use contrast paint to make blood effects? And actually, too, the I've got other videos that show up using the Green Stuff World, the skeleton and skull bits here on the bases, on the movement tray. Got little exercises in magnetizing your units. So all of that is again part of the army painting series. This is I think episode this is series four. My shiny Lannisters. So that's all sky earth non-metallic. I've got several Lord of the Rings series. Uh, here's another live episode I was doing. So again these are more shiny Lannisters so you got your 
This was done with uh, actually contrast paints here. These guys, the same thing. Just mixing in the contrast paints with regular paints. So now as this dries, I can get back in here. Here, let's take the take this off. Get my palette back in order here. Like I said, I got my wildwood here. I can start to add a few more darks in places. And if the other thing too, people are saying, well, what do you use to seal those or whatever? This is it. This is my favorite thing here. So it's Army Painter Anti Shine. You can brush this on. And when you brush it on, it starts clear and stays clear. And you can use this obviously 365 days a year because you're using it inside. And let's say you want to, you know, where it touches their. You're going to touch their head or something. Well, you put three, four layers there. So you're not going to end up with the shiny head syndrome. So again, this is just taking the contrast paint and painting with it as opposed to using it as more of a glaze. We're just literally painting with the contrast paints. Uh, yeah, there's places I just need to get some more darks. So I just add some more darks. Because I can do that. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for watching. I appreciate it here. Let me see if there's any been... Oh, thanks. Actually, uh, this is another one of the dark swords here. This is my color test. So this is the guy that's in the corners here. Here, yeah, let's... Do a quick zoom up here. There we go. That's better. So okay, it's a it's a pretty simple thing actually. You just kind of think, of, where's your horizon line, and then break up that horizon line. So that was another live session that I just did. Oh, what that? I think that was the one on the not the 16th, but that was the one I did on the 23rd. So again, we did a little bit of freehand. Where's it? Ah, this guy here. So we did a touch of freehand. We weathered that. We did some, some faces. We did some metal stuff on the swords. We've done some wet into wet blending with these things. We've had all kinds of fun with this. So if you want to do the like thing and subscribe, that way you'll get more notifications when we're doing fun stuff like this. And like I said, I'm going to try and do another one of these in a few days. And then a few days after that, maybe every third, fourth day, try and do one of these live sessions where I just try new things. Look, look at how sparkly that is now. That is nice and sparkly. Now, I hate there. Uh, thanks again for Kujo Painting and the Mean DM and Bluegrass Bonsai and Andrew and Bethany and Justin and everybody else. Really appreciate you hanging out with me here. It's been a fun, super early morning. Again, piled up some snow on there. We made our own little flesh tone. We tried to take the viewer from the face, down through the cloak, down through his leg here, down into the snow. We tried to reflect the snow as much as we could on our cloaks. So there you go, the Dark Sword Miniatures, painting some Night's Watch. So I'll catch you on the next one in a few days. Bye.